Ladies and gentlemen, the Standard newspaper yesterday had a very interesting headline. Revealed how UD allies plan to share power. Coalition pact between Deputy President ANC and Ford Kenya appears designed to placate Mount Kenya region, which expects to produce running mate while also creating jobs for the principal's closest allies. Now, that headline is not news. It is actually something which Kenyans have been talking about. If you understand and you follow politics very closely, you might have heard that one of the agreements the deputy president had with uh, with uh, with uh, Muslim Davadi is that Muslim Davadi is not going to be a presidential candidate. Muslim Davadi is not going to be a running mate, and that Muslim Davadi is going to be the chief secretary, equivalent of Fred Matiangi now, and of course it's not even in the constitution. And William Ruto's party is going to produce the presidential candidate. And the running mate is actually reserved for the Mount Kenya region. For Moses Wetangula, just like people say, in uh, this is just in uh, jokingly, that you buy Mudavadi, then get Weta, complete. Buy Mudavadi, get Weta. Now that's what people have been saying. But for Weta, he is comfortable being the senator for, for Bungoma, and then majority or minority leader at the Senate. And also there's a talk that it could also be considered for the Speaker of either National Assembly or of the Senate. I want us to look at this power arrangement between UDA, ANC, and Ford Kenya. Because personally, from my own perspective, I think the biggest loser in all this is none other than Musalem Davadi. As long as Musalem Dabadi is not going to be on the ballot, and as long as Musalem Dabadi is not going to be a running mate, he makes it very easy for Raila Molo Dinga and his brigades to actually penetrate Western Kenya if he had hoped to lock them out. And going by the events which took place yesterday in Transoia, Musalem Dabadi must be a very worried man. But before we get into all those details, please, if you're watching for the first time, Click that subscribe button now so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Now, I want to just go through this proposed power sharing, uh, power sharing arrangement. According to the standard, and this is what is there in the public, by the way, public domain, by the way, William Ruto will get the presidency. And he's supposed to pick a running mate. And you can already clearly tell who is going to be William Ruto's running mate. Either Rigadi Gashagwa or Alice Wahomen. But because Rigadi Gashagwa has the money, is uh, not well uh, reform-minded, I tend to think Rigadi Gashagwa will be the running mate. Then from there, the UDA will pick the Senate and women rep representative for Nairobi. So they're going to cede the gubernatorial seat then they are going to give uh, Senate. I don't know who they'll pick, but I want to assume the person they are going to choose for women rep, based on the way the deputy president has been behaving, is, is that he's likely to go for Bishop Margaret Wanjiru. He's going to negotiate with Mar Margaret Wanjiru and Sakaja. So Margaret Wanjiru will become the, the, the women representative. Or Margaret Wanjiru will be told to go to the Senate. Then Millicent Omanga comes to the women rep. For Mudavadi side, according to this newspaper, I'm going to, to go into why they are going for that. Mudavadi is going to be appointed a chief minister, minister without portfolio, and then he's going to pick the minister for finance and devolution. So we are going to have kind of jubilee arrangement, or jubilee, which is TN and URP arrangement, where the finance ministry was Uhuru and devolution. So in this case, Muslim Davadi, because he's been talking of uh, finance, is going to be given that finance docket and devolution. Remember, he was also the minister for local government at that time. Then he's, he's, he's also going to get one more ministry. So it means in this government, 
Musalim Madavad is going to get three ministries and himself. So they are going to get four. Then he's also going to get other government appointments like ambassadors, you know, permanent secretaries and the rest. And importantly, ANC party to produce governor candidate for Nairobi. So which means Sakaja is sorted. In Kakamega, Bonia Lwale has been sacrificed. The guy who is going to be sorted uh, correctly is now Clofas Malala. And then in Vihiga, they are going to reserve it. ANC, URP, I mean UDA is not going to sponsor a candidate. For Wetangula, according to this story, Wetangula is going to be allocated to cabinet slots. So it means Wetangula and uh, Mudavadi are going to get combined six slots for the cabinet. And is to get free pass for Mungoma Senate seat. So for Senate, he's going to get free pass. They are going to support him. He's not going to have any opponent. Which means once he's get is elected, then he's, he's going to be either a minority leader or majority leader based on the number of UDA and their alliance, the numbers they are going to produce. Then he's also going to get other appointments like when appointments are being done, it's going to be given maybe cabinet secretary, I mean, maybe permanent secretary. It could be given a director. It could be given a board members. And then to pick for the Kenya governor candidates in Bungoma and Transoya, which is actually the case now because the governor for, for Bungoma, as we speak, is for Kenya. Transoya is for Kenya. So basically, Transoya, they are going to reserve it for, uh, for Kenya and Bungoma. The implication of this alliance, in my view, is that Muslim Davadi is going to be the biggest loser. William Ruto is going to be the biggest winner. Why am I saying this? Let, let us begin by Ruto being the presidential candidate. Of course, it's normally the smaller rivers which join the bigger river. UDA is bigger than ANC and Ford Kenya combined. So there's no way Muslim Davadi was going to insist that he was going to be the running mate, I mean the presidential candidate. But Muslim Davadi's entry into William Ruto's camp was also going to complicate the equation in the larger Mount Kenya region. The Mount Kenya region voted for the deputy of our president, Ruto Kenyatta, jubilee in the last election, and Ruto was given the running mate. So the question Mount Kenya region have been asking is, what will Ruto give them? So if Ruto was going to give them, uh, give Mudavadi a running mate, it would have meant that there was going to be a rebellion. So to sort that, William Ruto told Mudabadi that the two, two tops we are not going to talk about, the running mate. So William Ruto is going to pick running mate from the larger Mount Kenya region because he knows so well that without doing that, Uhuru Kenyatta is going to have a leeway. And you also understand that if you want to pick a running mate from uh, Mount Kenya region, Raila Odinga is likely to make inroads by appointing, saying, because Raila Odinga, let's just face it, Ruto is going to appoint Rigadi Gashagwa as the running mate. Raila Odinga is likely to appoint Peter Kenneth based on my own assessment as at now. So that would have meant that if whatever they had insisted on a running mate, for example, would have still been good, but he was going to lose the support in the larger Mount Kenya region. So William Ruto understood that with Mudavadi and Weta in Western Kenya, at least he's now safe there. But without a running mate from West, from the larger Mount Kenya region, it, it was going to complicate the equation for him. And if there's one move which William Ruto really managed to secure, the deal, is the deal of Musalam Dabadi, accepting to join him without demands for the running mate. Then, when you come to Nairobi, William Ruto is not going to produce a candidate. ANC is going to produce a candidate. And you can clearly tell that that's why Sakaja was pushing for Mudavadi. Probably most Kenya didn't know that Sakaja, Ruto, and Mudavadi had already started negotiating. So Sakaja is going to be the, the gubernatorial candidate. So Ruto must get a running mate in Nairobi. Why? And that running mate will have to be either a Kamba or a Kikuyu. And I see a problem here. You know, Mike Sonko became the governor of Nairobi because of the Kamba votes in the last election. He was in Jubilee, so he was able to secure the Jubilee or the Kikuyu votes. And then Kamba's in Nairobi rallied because I, I, I was actually, actually involved in 
actively involved in that campaign. Then Kambas in Nairobi rallied behind Sonko. So I don't know where Sonko, the role of Sonko is going to play because from here, you can clearly tell that Sonko is now out of the question. But Ruto is also demanding for two additional slots. That is the Senate and the Nairobi Women Representative. Of course, Women Representative, probably Omanga, to appease the kisses and others, and then the Senate. Who will he appoint as his Senate candidate? Margaret Wanjiro. Or is Margaret Wanjiro going to be appointed the deputy governor for Nairobi? Already in ODM, I foresee a situation where Ngati is going to be supported. So if you are going to have Ngati as a running, as a president, as a governor for Nairobi, then we have uh, Sakaja as a governor for Nairobi, the two competing. <laughs> so we are going to have Kikuyus. So chances of Kikuyus rallying around Ngatia are going to be very high. Then if the Luos are going to support him, and the ODM lawyers from Nairobi are going to support him, Ngatia is going to win. But who is going to be the senator for Nairobi? On, on ODM side. Those are some of the questions, and I think those are some of the issues the deputy president is trying to pick up here. Then in Transoia, the deputy president is telling Weta, I'm going to allow you to have the Senate, I mean the governor, but I'm also going to, to pick the Senate. In my view, this is also being unfair to Weta. Weta ought to have been given the Senate because in Transoia, the governor, he already backed the governor. So if he's supporting the DP, he needs to give the DP if you need to give him the Senate. But remember, the Senate is actually a member of UDA, was elected on Jubilee in the last election. So again, you can say that they agreed that in places where they retained. What I don't understand is why in Bosia, for example, they've not included it. Maybe they know that Bosia, Mudavadi's chances are zero. Are zero. Now, let us get to Mudavadi. Mudavadi is going to be chief cabinet or chief minister, a position which is not in the constitution. We've seen William Ruto and his allies of late going for, to courts, uh, I mean, going to courts of late, litigating matters. So it means if William Ruto wants to betray Mudavadi, what he will do, he will appoint Mudavadi after winning, then send someone to court to question the appointment of chief minister. Courts will nullify that position and Muslim Davadi will be sent to the political oblivion. I tend to, I read something like that. What about the Minister for Finance and Devolution? Of course, William Rutos and his character means that even if Muslim Davadi were to appoint Minister for Finance and Devolution, their allegiance at the end of the day will be to none other than the Deputy President, Dr. William Ruto. So, in my view, Unless this arrangement is well documented and will be respected. Because if Wuru betrayed Ruto, and the Ruto we know, what tells you he can't betray Muslim Davadi? Then Mudavadi is going to get one more ministry. So it's going to be four, which is okay for him. He can pick, if he, if he appoints himself as a as chief minister, then it means in lawyer land, he's going to get a finance minister of devolution. So he can play around with the... With the, with the slots, maybe to distribute to other regions. And then he's going to get government appointments. Okay? <laughs> I don't know how many. And then ANC to produce the governor for Nairobi, Kakamega and Vega. You know why Ruto is seeding the Nairobi gubernatorial seat? Because there's no way UDA can win in Nairobi, the governor. Unless it was Sonko, or unless it was a Kiku candidate. But Sakaja, Ruto is comfortable with Sakaja because Sakaja is alleged to be a, a Kalenjin purporting to be a lawyer. So if they produce the governor, then it means Ruto can use that to rally the lawyer support in Nairobi. Then because he believes he can at least get half of the Kikuyu votes or even more, then Kikuyus can vote for Sakaja. Then Sakaja will easily win. What I don't know is why Vihiga is a factor here. 
Why should you discuss Vihiga? That should not be discussed. That should be automatically for Muslim Davadi, but it's being included there. For Kakamega, the fear is odium. And Malala, I think, just secured his own interest. So this, this uh, lineup here is going to make William Ruto or is going to break him, depending on the voting dynamics. And down here, you can also clearly see that Kalonzo Musioka is saying that for him, it's not going to work with with Ruto. If I were Raila, I would have allocated the Nairobi gubernatorial seat to Akamba or give them, ask Kalongo, Kalongo to produce a running mate, have a Kalamba running mate who is known. Or Kalonzo Musioka can actually come <laughs> and run for the Nairobi Senate. I don't know. Yeah, but Kalonzo, if you were to join uh, Azimio, I also believe very strongly that in the eyes of um, the Kamba nation is going to be kind of someone who has lost. So how is he going to deal with that? Or is Kalonzo going to go up to the ballot? Something which I really doubt. So politics is going to be very interesting. Let us wait and see how everything is actually going to unfold. William Ruto is in Kiambu. Rail Odinga is in Nairobi. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye bye.